Good afternoon, everybody. I am Bishop Taylor. Uh, I was asked to um, start off here by Sister Kaylin Sanchez. On behalf of the family of uh, Brother Julio Vasquez, I would like to welcome everybody to this memorial service, all friends and family of, of Julio Vasquez. And under these trying times, it's great to have everybody here to help us remember a great man who has brought much joy and happiness to the lives of of everybody that he touched throughout his life. As I uh, was thinking about what I would share as a short spiritual thought um, today before this memorial service, I was thinking of the last time that I really had to sit down with uh, Brother Vasquez where he and I were talking. And I remember I asked him two different questions. I asked him a question of why the temple was important to him and I asked him the question of why the atonement of our Savior Jesus Christ is important to him. And I was profoundly moved by his responses. With the atonement of the Savior of our Savior Jesus Christ, uh, Brother Vasquez stated that he owes everything in his life to his Savior, that his Savior has helped him through all of the trials and everything that he's ever gone through in his life. And he ended his short little testimony by stating that he just loves his Savior Jesus Christ. When I asked him about the temple, he said the temple was all about his family. And he said the most important thing in his life, besides his family here upon the earth, is going to the temple again, where he can be with his family through all time and eternity. Um, 
to close, I just would like to share one spiritual thought. And this comes from uh, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland. He said, Jesus walked with such a long and lonely path, utter, utterly alone, we do not have to do so. His solitary journey brought great com company for our little version of that path. The merciful care of our Father in heaven, the unfailing companionship of his beloved son, the consummate gift of the Holy Ghost, angels in heaven, family members on both sides of the veil, prophets and apostles, teachers, leaders, and friends. I want to add my short little testimony that as we recognize the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ at this time, and as you're going through this difficult time and grieving for the passing of Brother Vasquez, I give you my solemn testimony that his enduring love that Brother Vasquez has for his family and friends will continue. And I encourage you to heed his counsel to make family the most important thing you can in your life and going to the temple to be sealed to those family members for all time and eternity. Because for all of you who love Brother Vasquez and he loves you too, he's now waiting for you to join him. And I say these things in the name of my savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Mm -hmm. We are now going to have an opening prayer uh, by Jamie Alonso. Nuestro Padre Celestial, hoy en este día oramos, Padre, para darte gracias por la vida, por la familia, por tu evangelio sempiterno, por el gran plan de salvación que tienes preparado para nosotros. Oramos, Padre, para darte gracias por haber conocido al hermano Julio Vázquez, un gran hombre, y a toda su familia. Te pedimos, Padre, que bendigas al hermano para que esté en un buen lugar de acuerdo al plan de salvación, Padre. Te pedimos que bendigas a su familia para que tenga paz, esperanza y consuelo, que por medio del plan de salvación podemos ver a nuestras familias cuando Dios nos llame y estemos del otro lado del velo. Te damos gracias, Padre, por todas las cosas que nos das para poder vivir aquí en esta tierra y te pedimos que nos bendigas y nos protejas de esta pandemia que nos ha causado mucho mal a todo el mundo. Y estas cosas, Padre, las decimos humildemente en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Amén. 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 Is James Allen Skaggs available? Oh, Allen.
Can you unmute yourself, Alan? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I can't see anything. I see an Indiana University screen. I am not sure why you see an Indiana University screen. It went to that screen right after the uh, song. Not sure. We're all looking at you. Okay, here we go. I, okay, I can see now. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We have come here today to say a fond farewell to my grandpa, Julio Vasquez. He has passed away to a veil, up through the veil to a more beautiful dwelling to meet with the Lord and his loved ones who have waited for his arrival. At the time of his death, Grandpa was 83, year, 83 years old, leaving a legacy of love, kindness, and service. He had been in frail health for many years. In fact, he has lived 20 years past the time the doctors gave him only six months to live. He died on December 16th, 2020, surrounded by family members from both sides of the veil from complications of COVID-19. Grandpa was born November 12th, 1937 in Mexico to Pablo Vasquez Nunez and Marcelina Flores Martin. He was one of 13 children, which is why we all have such a large family. We didn't know how to stop growing that number. <clears throat> in his early 20s, Grandpa was working at a restaurant in Mexico when two missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sat in the corner of his restaurant. He helped them and, he, and they asked him if he wanted to know about Jesus Christ and he said yes. It didn't take long before he was baptized into the church. He petitioned the U.S. Embassy to enter the United States as a permanent resident, and with the help of his branch president, he found an LDS family to sponsor him in the U.S. His first home in the States was in Salt Lake City, Utah, where there he received a calling to serve in the Southwest Spanish American Mission. He served the first half of his mission in Arizona and later was transferred to Mexico. When he was released from his mission, he returned to Salt Lake, and a few months later, he was invited to a party, and there he met a girl that would become his eternal companion. Her name was Dolores Eller from Indiana. At the time, Grandpa didn't speak English, and Grandma didn't speak Spanish, which I'm sure made for some interesting dates and conversation. They dated for six months and were sealed for time and all eternity in the Mesa, Arizona temple. A little over a year later, they wrapped up their two and a half month old baby girl, loaded what they owned into a U-Haul trailer and moved to Indianapolis because the job's prospects were much better and he was always a man of faith. He became a citizen of the United States in 1967. You may have noticed that his family spells their name with an S and a Z while he and his family here spell it with two Zs. When Grandpa would sign his name, he would write both versions and was told he had to pick one to become a citizen. And that's why the family here in Indiana spell it V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. -E Grandpa's first job in Indianapolis with the RCA Record Company on the east side. He worked there for several years and then got employment with the Link Belt Company as a machinist. He retired from there when he started having some health problems. His life was a life of service. He treated everyone with kindness and respect. He would give you the shirt off his back and never wanted anyone to go without. He was faithful in his church callings, and he was a humble man. Grandpa was a constant missionary. Wherever he went, he told people about the gospel of Christ and the Book of Mormon. Even in the last hospital stay, when he was able, he talked to the nurses and doctors and bore his testimony to them. He constantly talked to his family and admonished the oldest and the youngest to live the gospel. He would admonish his family to read the Book of Mormon, and he always loved to sing, I am a child of God. At one time, Grandpa left the church, and he was having a particularly hard time, but he never lost his testimony. Later, I rebaptized him and had all of his priesthood blessings restored to him, and had the privilege of going with him to the Indianapolis Temple on September 28, 2020, when he was sealed to his parents and his brother. What a very special time for the family together outside of that temple, and for pictures to commemorate the occasion. Grandpa couldn't stop smiling because of the joy of what just happened to our family. He was also proud of his Mexican heritage and made each of us family proud of our Mexican heritage as well. 
For the last 21 years, the Vasquez family has gathered on January 6th of each year for a homemade Mexican dinner to celebrate when the three wise men got to Bethlehem. He always had presents for the little children and he always enjoyed being with his family. But I would like to leave you with a little story. There once was a man who was to make a long journey on a large ship. He was excited about this trip and invited all of his family and friends to see him off. Everyone was saddened by the thought of him leaving and some cried. He boarded the ship and it pulled away from the dock. Everyone watched the ship get smaller and smaller as it approached the horizon. There he goes, said someone. Then the ship vanished. But on the other side of the ocean, a group of people waited for the ship to arrive. As soon they could see the ship coming far in the distance. They were very excited and happy and rejoicing. They got larger and larger as it came closer to the edge and to the shore. And the people standing in the dock go, here he comes. Some joyfully said, so it is that with my grandpa that he has left us for the waiting arms of his family and the Lord on the other side. And when it becomes our time, I know that he will be there waiting for us as well. Thank you. Wonderful job, Alan. You're fine. Kaylin, um, you will need to share audio if there's audio to be played. Tell me if this is better. Yes, ma'am. Pensar, 
que lleve de los que nos lleve con sus alas aquel pasado comprometido con este amor. No tengas miedo de perder, no dejaré que nadie intente arrebatarme esta vida contigo.
Christ as his son. And I know also that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only true gospel in the entire world. I know that love that God loves us because I have had so many experiences with the Heavenly Father even since I was a child. I wanted to be baptized right away, but the missionary told me, no, you have to finish the sixth lesson. So when I finished, I was baptized. And I'm very thankful because the, the gospel is true. God lives. And Jesus Christ, his son, uh, also lives. And I must say this, that Jesus Christ is his only begotten son. We are his, his uh, children, uh, Heavenly Father. And I know this is true because I can no deny that. And even when they, they killed me. So I know the gospel is true. And I'm thankful to my heavenly father since I was baptized. Then all my children were baptized. They received a blessing when they were babies. And all my great grandchildren, my, all my grandchildren also, they were members of the church. Some I, uh, no, so uh, I'm very thankful for the gospel of Jesus Christ that uh, uh, it helps us to live better, to understand other people better, and also uh, when we became parents, we love them and we take care of them because uh, we are just a uh, a temporary parent, but God is our, our heavenly father for all of us. So I'll say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hello, is Cooper available? Cooper Wimmer, please unmute yourself. Can you hear me? We can hear you now, go ahead. Oh, great. Um, <clears throat> thank you. I had the opportunity to serve my LDS mission in the Indiana, Indianapolis mission. For those of you that don't know, um, a mission is where you leave your family for two years to go and bring other families uh, closer to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This can be one of the hardest times of your life, but also one of the most rewarding. I had the opportunity to meet the wonderful Sanchez family and Abuelo Vasquez. They were one of the families that brought us missionaries into their home and made us feel like we were with our families. We knew we were at their house because when we got out of the car, we could smell Sister Sanchez's wonderful cooking and we could hear Brother Vasquez shout, Ay, mija, 
playfully scolding his granddaughters. The first time I went to their home and met him, he wanted to know all about me and my family. He didn't want to know about me just to be nice. He sincerely wanted to know about me. You could see sincerity and compassion in his eyes. By the end of our first visit, I felt like I had a new grandfather. And after many visits, I felt like I was going home every time we visited. I have a distinct memory of one time asking him at the close of a visit, saying, hey, you know, can we visit you more often? Can we come and um, spend more time with you during the day and, and visit with you? And I distinctly remember his response. He said, no, come over for dinner anytime, but during the day, go and do your work. People need to hear the gospel. He often asked me about my Native American culture, and we had wonderful discussions about uh, the Book of Mormon and his uh, culture and coming from Mexico. And he was always quick to tell you a wonderful story, but also the best listener you could imagine and was genuinely interested in what you had to say. I know he has a place in heaven with our father. I know that he was a God-fearing man and a soldier for Christ. You can see the fruits of his labors and of a life well-lived by looking at his beautiful children and grandchildren. I am blessed to have known him and can't wait to see him again. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Terry, Terry Limbrick, are you available? Terry? All right, um, let's try for Colleen go ahead, then. Go ahead, say something. She's oh. ah, there you are. Yep. Sorry about that. I'm a little unprepared this morning. Um, I just want to tell a little story about when I first started digging lane. How uh, me and Julio used to travel his favorite stores. We go all over the city, and uh, one time he uh, found a wallet. Which you see, you know, he's like, oh, Terry, come here, you go, look at this, this is Italian leather, this is a nice wallet. And I was like, you know, congratulate him on his find and all that. And uh, about two weeks later, I had the privilege of helping him move. And he had a box of about 200 leather wallets. And a single man couldn't have any wallets in a lifetime. Um, he taught me a lot over the years how to be a little more patient with my children. He taught me a lot about the gospel. Um, and I'm truly missing of you, Leo. Hello, my name is Colleen. I'm a Garfield's oldest grandchild. And I have always been really proud of my grandpa. I would always talk about him, and I talk about him often to my friends. And I'm always like, let's call my grandpa, let's talk to him. And I just wanted to share a few memories. When, when we were little, Whenever we'd cross a big road, he'd say, run for your life. <laughs> and then we'd grab him and take off running, like our life depended on it. And even as an adult, every time I cross a big road, I'd say, run for your life. And one time when I was talking to my friend, we were on the phone with my grandpa and we were telling him about the boys we were dating. And he said, oh, yeah. Whatever you tell the boy, you just gotta smack him on the butt a little bit. And I was like, 
I can't go around smacking yeah. people's butts. And he's like, oh, just a little tap, honey, just a little tap. And then that way they know you that you you like them. And he was just really funny uh, with that kind of stuff. And the last memory I want to share, I hold very tender to my heart, as my husband Alan spoke um, earlier with his eulogy. We were told that our grandpa wasn't going to live when I was in high school. And I remember being in church and he, we were in the foyer and he was talking to my brother and I, and I was probably in my early twenties and just doing stuff that, you know, I shouldn't been doing. And my grandpa's worried. My grandma's always worried. And he always had a strong testimony. He knew where he came from and he, he knew who Jesus Christ was and he knew who his heavenly father was. And he pleaded with my brother and I in the foyer telling us, come to church. You have to go to church. You have to live the commandments. They're going to protect you. you. You need to be worthy to enter the Lord's house and go to the temple. And at the time, I did not want to live worthy to be in God's presence. And I didn't want to change my life because it would have been, it would have been really hard. And I remember leaving the church thinking that my grandpa was going to pass soon because that's what the doctor said. And I remember thinking being so sad saying, I can't give that, my grandpa that, I can't give that man his last dying wish to go back to church because I wasn't ready. And I'm so grateful that he was able to live longer than the doctor said, a lot longer, and that he was able to, to see me change my life around. And he's, he was able to see me move to Salt Lake and to really devote my life to Heavenly Father and to be temple worthy and to live the, and to live the commandments. And it wasn't easy and it was really hard. It's still hard. But I know that through his testimony and his life that my testimony is strengthened. And I know through those teachings that I will see my grandpa again. I know that this time on earth is temporary. And it's for us to learn to be the person we need to be to look at Heavenly Father and say, did I do, did I do what I needed to do? Did I do the things that I needed to do to prepare to be with you and to live with my grandpa and be with him and everyone else that has passed in my family. And I'm just grateful for that. And I'm grateful for my grandpa's example. And I'm going to miss him, but I know he's close by. I feel him already. And with sharing this testimony of, of faith in, in my Heavenly Father, I just wanted to leave this with you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Elaine, Elaine Limbrook. My name is Elaine, and I'm Julio's second daughter. As he loved to say, I have four daughters and one son. He was very proud of his children. There's so much that I can share about my dad. Some of the things you've already heard, and some of the things you will hear later. But today, I would like to share what I feel is most important to me. It's not necessarily what my dad said, even though he said many cute little Mexican sayings that our family will appreciate and laugh as we recite them for many years to come. He told lots of stories, and he sang cute little songs that we will cherish as we put our little precious ones to sleep. I think the most important things that he will be remembered for is not what he said, but what he did. It's the example that he set for us. First, I think foremost that my dad loved Love was a big part of my dad. He loved every one of his family members, parents, siblings, extended family. He loved children, grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. He loved the children and the loved ones that came into our family through marriages and through um, different parts of our lives, times in our lives, and we consider them family to this day. He just loved and you felt that love. He was concerned about you. He was concerned about others by asking questions, getting to know you and checking on you. And he accepted others as they were and he saw them as a child of God. He truly lived by the scripture in John 13, 34, 35, and it says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this, all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. My dad was also a peacemaker. He never wanted contention among his family, among his children, or in any situation that he was in. Sometimes he would say just the right things so that you wouldn't be upset and your feelings wouldn't be hurt. And he said those things in a way that you believed him and you trusted what he said. You knew it. You just felt loved. My dad exhibited a scripture that reminds me of peacemakers. In Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. My dad was also very grateful. He didn't complain about his circumstances. He always told me when I asked him, how are you doing today, Dad? He would say, oh, Miha, I feel good. I feel great. I thank my Heavenly Father for my health. And for years, my dad's health was not good. He had to take insulin shots three times a day for many, many years. And a lot of his grandchildren helped him. And he enjoyed that. They were his little nurses. He had pain in his legs and his arms and hands from the nerve damage. <sighs> He had multiple heart issues 
and he became bedridden and was unable to walk in the last several months. But he never complained. He never said, I want to get out of this bed. I wish I could walk. I wish he never complained. He even told me one time when I was visiting him that he wanted to rearrange his clothes in his closet. He was very particular about his things. But then he remembered, he told me, I can't get out of bed. And every birthday for the past, oh, I think about 35 years or so, he would say, we would say, how old are you today, Dad? And he would say, I'm 39. And we would all laugh. I think this last birthday when he turned 83, we said, okay, Dad, I think you're 40 now. <laughs> and this quote by Eller Uchtdorf reminds me of my dad. He said, our loving Heavenly Fathers knows that choosing to develop a spirit of gratitude will bring us true joy and great happiness. Joy and happiness was my dad. My dad was also a humble man. He never boasted. He never wanted the attention. He never took credit, even when credit was due. He always was willing to let others feel they were the most important one. He was long suffering and truly had the pure love of Christ, which is charity. And a scripture found in Alma 7, 47, which is from the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ says, but charity is the pure love of Christ and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. My dad also knew and understood the importance of the atonement of Jesus Christ. He showed his family that you can make better choices. You can become more of what our Heavenly Father wants for us and for him to become. He knew that this was the life and the opportunity that we have to grow and to change and to make those decisions to get us back to our Heavenly Father and to be rewarded the great promises and blessings our Father in Heaven has promised us if we are faithful to the end, not perfect, but faithful. We can each make those close corrections now. He exhibited that great example to me of faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I hope to honor him by living so that I will join him in the next life as promised and that it's possible to make the Savior Jesus Christ. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For those who that for those of you that don't know me, my name is Renee. I am my grandfather's fourth oldest grandchild. It was hard for me to to find only one good memory of my grandpa because I have so many wonderful memories of them. When my sister Jeanette and I were around 12 years old. I remember our friends being so excited for the weekend because we, they were able to go to their friend's house. But my sister and I were always so excited to go to our grandpa's house for the weekend. We wanted to go to his house because it was so fun. He always had a bunch of good food and little Debbie's. <laughs> and if you knew my grandpa, then you know, you knew he loved to eat and always made sure everyone's bellies were full. He also had cable, so my sister and I were able to watch our favorite TV show, Degrassi. 
we he would even play restaurant with us where we were the waitress and our grandpa was the customer. We would pretend like we were writing down his order and he would pay us with imaginary money. All of the memories I have of my grandpa are very special to me. Every time I was around my grandpa, I always felt loved, protected, and safe. He taught me the meaning of family and why family is so important. But even though he isn't here with us on earth, he's still with me and all of us. And I know I will see him again. When I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, uh, one memory that I have of my grandpa is um, when he would come over, um, I would help him, and um, he would call me his little nurse. And um, before, and I also have another memory, and um, uh, uh before we would go to his house, um, I would always say, Papa, eat? Because I knew we were going to eat whenever he comes over. <clears throat> For those who don't know me, my name is Jeanette, and I'm one of Grandpa's grandchildren. I think we can all agree that Grandpa was more than your ordinary Grandpa. He took so much pride in his family and loved his family so much. He left us with more than cherished memories. He left us with his legacy. Grandpa didn't have favorites, although he would tell each of us that we were without the others <laughs> hearing. He loved all of us with all his heart. I remember as a little kid, staying the night at his house, he would tell me stories about his mission and living in Mexico and Texas. He always told us the great love story of him and grandma. He always says he saw this beautiful girl with long black hair and big, I won't say what he said, and I know right now he's probably saying, child, <laughs> I remember him always making me laugh and teasing him, and he would pretend to get after us and yell his inf infamous child because he knew we loved his reactions. He taught us to be considerate of others. He counseled us to get a good education, get a good job, marry a good Mormon boy or girl. I'm grateful for the time I had with him and for him to watch me do those things. I know he was proud of all his grandchildren. He also loved to feed his family. It was one of his most favorite things to do. I remember as a child, he would give me and my sister's quarters so we could walk to the village pantry down the street from his house to buy little Debbie's. And even as an adult, when I would visit him, he would always tell me to go get something to eat. There are so many wonderful things that I love about my grandpa. I know he is still close to me. I know, I know he is now able to help and bless his family in more ways than before. I know his spirit still lives and he continues his work on the other side of the veil. He loved to preach the gospel, and I know he is doing that to his family members that have also passed on. So when I start to feel sad and miss him, 
I can think about where he is and what he is doing. And I know that he is happy watching over all of us. And I know we can feel him too. And we will see him again. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to pee pee. I want to go to the restroom. Wait, what? <laughs> What's the poopy one? And the poopy one wants to go. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, it's, it's coming out. It's coming out. Grandpa, <laughs> are you sleepy? No, I'm not sleepy, child. <laughs> That's my eyes. Hi. <laughs>
Bye, Mika. Love you. Love you. Why are you saying I'm an angel? Because you have the halo. Oh. I'm an angel. 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 When I think of my grandpa, I think of all the funny, funny moments we shared. I also think of all the things he has taught me. He was definitely hilarious, as you can tell from the videos. Um, he would always be making jokes and having us children laugh. What is really funny is that every time he would ask us to do something, we would always give him a hard time about it. Um, and that is when he would always say, I am the father of your mother. Um, I'm definitely going to miss him saying that all the time. Every time I give someone a hard time, I'll definitely think of that moment. Every time I would come home from college, I would go surprise him that I was home he would get so happy and, and yell, ay mija, or ay mi cielo, I was just thinking about you. It will be an adjustment not to be able to su surprise him and hear him say that anymore. Uh, he would always make me laugh every time when he would say, mija, I raised you when you were little. You would scare me all the time because you just started to walk and you would go running up those stairs. I am so grateful for the time I spent with him. There are so many memories that I have with my grandpa and I will cherish them and hold on to them forever. I love you, grandpa, and I know you are happy to be home. Make sure you unmute, Isabel. You just did it. You did right. it. <laughs> so I want to start out by saying hi to all my friends and my family that are on this Zoom meeting. Um, basic training is going great for me, and I have a lot of good friends and memories to share, but... I will say that one of the hardest days um, during my basic training was December 16th and December 17th. I was volunteering to help with the task with my drill sergeants and I remember they just called me by my name into the commander's office and he sat down and told me that they had just received a Red Cross message from my family that my grandfather was very sick and that he had COVID-19 and his days were very limited. Um, I don't think I've ever felt that type of pain before. I just felt all the blood drain from my face and I just got very weak. Um, I had no idea how to express my feelings or my emotions, but I was able to get a phone and I was able to say my last goodbyes to him. And I kind of knew that that would be the last time that I was able to. Um, I just remember that night that I was just praying that he could for a couple more days so that I could somehow say goodbye to him in person. But that next day, December 17th, I was informed that he had unfortunately passed away. My heart shattered and there were so many tears. I remember just laying on the bathroom floor in my um, barrack and I just cried to my friends. I didn't know what to do. And 
the only thing I could think of was how when I came home just a couple days ago that he would not be able to see me in my uniform. Um, so that just helps me think back to the last time I was able to see him, which was October 4th, the last time we hugged and the last time I told him I loved him and it just makes it real special. Whew. Um, Grandpa, I know that you're here with us and that you're here with me right now. And I know you see me and what I look like and how good I look. I also know that you are very proud of me for what I'm doing and I plan on trying to make you proud for the rest of my time that I'm here. And I want you to know that I will become a doctor and I will be thinking of you every step of the way. And I, cause I know that's what you wanted me to be. You always, every time you would see me, you'd say, Miha, you better become a doctor. Um, I have so many memories of you, our memories, and I don't think I'll ever forget them. A long memory, a long time ago, I have a memory of one time I was locked out of my house because I had gotten off the school bus and I knocked on the door and all I hear is, hold on, Miha, I'm coming. And I looked through the window and I just saw you wobbling with your walker trying to get to the door fast so I wasn't standing outside in the cold. And as soon as I got in, you were like, Miha, lock the door. Don't open it for anybody. And then another memory is you would just sit in your room when you wouldn't have anything on. You'd be like, Miha, I don't have my bra. And there's so many little things that you say, I'll never forget. I always share those memories with my friends, especially now. And then you would do this to me. These are your bullhorns. And then you just say, Feliz. And then everybody would respond, Navidad. Especially now that Christmas is close. But Grandpa, I will never forget how faithful you were. You always made sure to tell us that Jesus lives and that Heavenly Father loves us and that heaven is real. And it gives me a lot of comfort now knowing that, that you're up there right now, you're walking, you're running around, and you're up there listening to La, La Camisa Negra, that was our song. And you're up there hugging all your family and you're waiting for all of us up there now. Grandpa, my heart aches without you and I wish I could see you again but I know that families are forever and that one day we will all be reunited. And I hope that you know that you better greet me with your wereha and a big old hug. I love you forever and always, and I will miss you. That's it. Um, hi, my name is Pilar, for those of you who don't know me. I am a granddaughter of Julio. I'm not really sure what number, but um, Grandpa was the sweetest person I knew, and he loved his family so much. He was also a very fond lover of animals. Um, every time we got a new pet, he would, like, always name them. Um, I also remember when I would um, be in his room and he would say, look at the birds, Miha, so beautiful. And then he would say, every, um, every day right at six o'clock, the birds fly away and go to sleep because they know. Then he would say something of how Heavenly Father gave them those instincts and how animals are so smart. Grandpa always demanded a hug before anyone would go to sleep. So even on the days when I stayed up super late to finish homework, when I would go tell him goodnight, or at least see if he was awake, awake, asleep, um, he would say, I was waiting for you, hon. Another nighttime tradition Grandpa and I had was every night I would tell him goodnight. I love you, sweet dreams, and I'll see you tomorrow. And then I would repeat it over and over every time he talked until he said, okay, goodnight, child, go to bed. Then when I went to my room, um, when Isabel was home, she would always make fun of me because how long I would always take to tell him good night. Um, Grandpa and I also did like to do other stuff too, like watch movies. And every time we would watch a movie, he would always ask me 
if I was tired because I was clearly falling asleep, but I would always just say no. That way I could hang out with him a little longer. Um, we also just did random stuff too, like when he was listening to music and I would go in his room and just start dancing. And, or I would just pop in his room and ask if he needs anything. And then if he said no, I would just stand creepily by his door. Um, he was also just someone who loved to laugh, like when he would mimic, like when we would mimic him talking to the voice remote saying, Univision. Or when we had small dance parties and he would make fun of our goofy dances. I'm going to miss my grandpa, but I know he's still watching over me. And I feel that every time I'm close to God, because even though he's been gone for just a little while, I already have seen the small little impacts that he's doing to show that he's still watching over us. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kaylin Vasquez Sanchez, and I am the youngest daughter. <clears throat> Those are my three daughters that just spoke. And um, I have dedicated my life uh, for the last five, almost six years of taking care of my dad. Like my other sisters have said that, um, and nieces, they they mentioned that my dad's health um, wasn't the greatest and doctors gave him tw uh, six months to live like in the 90s. <clears throat> and taking care of him was a blessed curse. He had that macho, I'm the father, and he always knew the girls a schedule he would I would come home from work and he would say oh mija uh, Pilar is at her dad's house and I'd say I know and then he's like oh well Isabel is going this other place and I'd say I know and he would just say child you know everything and I would remind him of course they're, it's my children I I know everything <clears throat> But my dad was a very sweet and humbled man of little means. And I have embraced the Mexican culture because of him, that because he taught us to be so proud of who we are and our Mexican culture. And I'm forever ever thankful for that. <clears throat> I have a little message for my familia in, in Texas. Mis primos, tías y tíos. Yo cuide a mi papá con todo mi corazón y amaré con todo mi alma. Mi papá siempre pregunté, hija, ¿cuándo puedo ir a Texas para visitar mi familia? Y a veces le pregunté los doctores pero dijo no permisión para ir porque su <coughs> salud es muy malo y él no puede ir, pero están en su corazón todo tiempo. I want my family to know that he loved all of us. No matter what heartache that we have gone through, no matter what circumstances have occurred. He loved all of us. And I'd like to share a little message on his behalf to his children and his grandchildren. Reverend Chanda, can you play that? Oh, that was 
you can just say a message to them if you want to to tell them you love them yeah. or okay and i want to tell you one thing i love each one of you with all my heart and i'm thankful to my heavenly father that he gave me five children and all of them have been very very responsible with me but i'm thankful for your help i'm thankful to my heavenly father for all these beautiful children he gave me he gave me and they helped me a lot without each one of you i don't know what i will be what will happen to me and my grandkids that they love me very much and i love them and as i'm very thankful for each one of you for the help you gave me when i get old and when i was sick you helped me a lot and i'm very very thankful with all those blessings that you give your children of mine have given me was a lot thank you very much i love you brother lane can you offer the closing prayer please Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all the testimonies and songs that went forward. We truly thank you for them. We thank you for Sister Sanchez and her family, my good friends. And Lord, we have lost a good friend. But it's one thing I would take, Lord, out of this, and that is he showed me the way that you are never too old to get your priesthood restored before you cross the veil. I thank him for that, my good friend. And I'll leave with this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. This concludes the service. God bless you, and thank you all for joining. Kaylin, did you not want the closing music? Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry for your family. It was such a privilege to get to know him and he will be in our hearts for a very long time. Thank you, Allison.
Good evening, good evening, good evening. This will conclude the service. Thank you so much, Reverend Shondo.